You have the questions. We have the answers. Welcome to A-O-S-D-C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R, Assembly of Sound Doctrine Chandler. This is a YouTube channel dedicated to learning the ancient Hebraic mindset. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Make sure you comment, like, share, and hit the bell. Y'all have a blessed evening. Stay in Shalom. Brother, I want to answer your question as well. Uh, before I answer your question, though, I want to re-clarify the statement that I made earlier because I know it got muddied up by now. When I was saying Hebraic literature, I wasn't saying Hebraic idioms. I was saying literature, as in the Hebrews left a commentary on their own scriptures. So if we're going to start talking about commentaries, we have we should include the commentaries they left on their own scriptures. Regardless if you agree with them or disagree with them, they left commentaries on how they read their scriptures. So that's why I was saying Hebraic literature. You got the Dead Sea Scrolls and et cetera that gives commentary on their literature. All right. So now to answer uh, the brother's question about what things are supposed to look like in the post 70 AD in the new heavens and the new earth. Well, I, we have to look at what Paul was stating. First of all, in Acts 24, he made this declaration right here. Hope you guys don't mind if I read a couple of scriptures. He says, but this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believe in all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also show that there should be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. So according to Paul, his hope, the things that he believed in, is coming out of the law and prophets. He also makes this declaration in Romans, Romans 7 and 6. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should not serve, sorry, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. So Paul is letting it be known that even the oldness of the letter has a new spiritual explanation. So when Paul is talking about we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of the eye, at the last trumpet, and etc., these things are coming from the law and prophets, literally coming from the law and the prophet. So my so my brother want to know. What does it look like post-70 AD when this change occur? Well, if Paul is talking about this change from uh, corruptible to incorruptible, all I have to do is go into the prophet. I could go into Daniel, but I want to go into Isaiah to show what was going to be the outcome of this change. Isaiah 65, we're speaking of a change. This is what the change is in Isaiah 65, 17. And I'm going to be reading it from uh, the Brenton, what they call the Septuagint or whatever. For there shall be a new heaven and a new earth, and they shall not, not at all remember the former, neither shall they all come into mind. So we have a change from the old to the new, from the corruptible to the incorruptible. So this is what he states about this change when they're into the new heavens and the new earth. He says, but they shall find joy in her and exultation. For behold, I make Jerusalem a rejoicing and my people a joy. So there's some rejoicing in the new heavens and the new change for the people as well as the place. And I will. He says, I will rejoice in Jerusalem. This is a place where the Lord is rejoicing in. The Lord wasn't rejoicing in Jerusalem in the old covenant. So this is a new covenantal change. Now he's rejoicing in Jerusalem and will be glad in my people. The new covenant promise. I will be their God. They shall be my people. So now he's rejoicing in his people, not the old covenant people in the old heaven and earth, but the new covenant people and the new heaven and earth and he says and there shall be uh and there shall be her in her no more the voice of weeping and the voice of crying so there's no crying 
or weeping within this new heaven and new earth. And he goes on to say, neither shall there be any more a child that dies untimely. So if that's the case, if there's going to be ne neither more a child that dies untimely, that meant before this change, children or the man was dying untimely. And we can talk about what that means in a moment. He says, or an old man who shall not complete his time. So if there's, if there's the promise in the new heavens and the new earth that the old man was going to complete his time, that means in the old heaven, in the old earth, the, the old man did not complete his time. For the youth shall be a hundred years old. So now this is the, 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 the things that we should actually focus on, this statement right here. For the youth shall be a hundred years old, and the sinner who dies at 100 years old shall also be accursed. So there's two ages right here. There's two people. You got the youth being 100 years old. You got the sinner being 100 years old. But when both of their life is completed, the reality of their lives is different. The youth is able to rejoice. The sinner is being accursed. The sinner is, is accursed for his hundred years. Meanwhile, the youth is in joy for his hundred years. So they're living at the, si the same time period. They're inside of the same transitioning into the new heavens and earth, but they have two different realities. One reality is joy. The other reality is a curse. This is happening post-70 A.D., According to the four predators, this is happening post the new heavens and the new earth coming. So now the new heavens and new earth come, two realities for mankind. One mankind experienced the joy with the Lord, the other mankind experienced being the curse. And verse 21 goes on to say, And they shall build houses, and themselves shall dwell in them, and they shall plant vineyards, and themselves shall eat the fruit thereof. Uh, let me see here. They shall by no means build and another and others inhabit. And they shall by no means plant and others eat. For as the days of the tree of life shall be, the days of my people, they shall long enjoy the fruits of their labor. So now, if you understand what Isaiah is speaking on right here, Isaiah is speaking from the opposite of what happened in the curses. If you go back to Deuteronomy uh, 28, 15 down. This is the curses. The curses was they're going to build. Another was going to take. They was going to plant. Another was going to eat and etc. They was going to labor and another was going to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Here in the new heavens and the new earth, he has taken away the curses from his people. In Deuteronomy 28, his people, the sons of God, then old covenant Israel, they were his people, but they still had the curses above them and on them. And the new heavens and earth, his people no longer have the curses on them, allowing them to enjoy the earth that the Lord has created for them. And I'll read this and then I'll be done. My chosen shall not toil in vain, neither shall they begat children to be cursed, for they are a seed blessed of God and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will hearken to them. Remember, the Lord does not hear sinners. So he's letting it be known here, sin was going to be forgiven. That's the only way that they can call and the Lord hearken to them. He doesn't hearken to sinners. So once again, this is Isaiah explaining that all sins was going to be forgiven of the children of the Lord, allowing them to be within him and him within them, the new covenant promise. This is what the Jews and the early Christians were really looking for, a relationship with their God in which he could bless them, what they can enjoy uh, the, the fruits of their labor. They can enjoy him. That's the reality of post-70 A.D. Anything else is not what the scriptures was trying to teach on how 
things was going to transpire when the when the new covenant came. Uh, thank y'all for letting me get all that out. Uh, I'll mute my mic now.